<laughs> Let me show its features. I'm sure many of you who are watching this are already familiar with Yerk Spray from the Slingshot channel. For those who don't know, he runs a very large YouTube channel. Um, he's from Germany, has the heartiest of hearty laughs, and he wants to show you his features. And one of those features which he was very happy to show me was this device. Now it may look like a crossbow, it is not a crossbow. This, as much as it sounds weird, is a spring-loaded magazine for a bow. He calls this the instant Genghis Khan. <laughs> it's so much fun. To describe the instant Genghis Khan in the simplest possible way, it is a magazine that can be attached to a bow. I can't believe I'm saying this, but that's what he invented. And well, if you know Jörg, you shouldn't be surprised. Uh, he's done a few of these. He's made several generations of the instant Legolas, which attaches to um, the mini compound bow. And this particular version is designed for horse bows. Uh, the idea being that, well, what if the Mongols made something like this? And in line with that, the uh, aesthetics of the design are based off materials and the look which might be suitable for a Mongolian or medieval sort of setting. So it is made from wood, it is painted a nice dark brown. Uh, some nice features include the um, writing, the Mongolian script, which I believe says Khan. Um, so it's a pretty simple but very creative design, uh, definitely worthy of uh, Jörg's um, great intellect. It's just so amazing to see how simple this tool is, but how great it works. The inspiration for Jörg's invention comes from this historical tool. Uh, this is the arrow guide. It's called different names in different cultures. Uh, in Korea it's called the Donga. In Turkish archery it's called the Madra. The purpose is to allow the archer to shoot a much, much shorter arrow. Uh, the arrow is placed in the arrow guide, it's placed alongside the bow and is launched through this tube so that it can fly much further, much faster and it can't be shot back. Now I can't pretend that I know what went through Jörg's head but I imagine it's something like, gee, what if we take this thing and add a magazine to it? Which is basically what the instant Genghis Khan is. Despite what it looks like, this is not a crossbow stock and it won't turn your bow into a crossbow. This is simply a hollowed out uh, wooden piece. Uh, it acts as a magazine. Uh, it has no catch, it has no trigger, uh, but it is a very, very crazy tool which has been exceptionally fun to use. Now, apart from the fact that it does act as an arrow guide, the distinction feature of this tool is the uh, reloading ability. Uh, I'm not sure how to put this in archery terms. <laughs> Basically, it combines the uh, um, arrow guide from the Tonga or the Madra with the loading mechanism as you might see in a rifle like the Henry rifle or the Winchester and you load bolts into this magazine. I'm still not sure why I'm saying this. How it works is that you slide the arrows into the uh, opening here and uh, in lieu of springs, and I want to point out that Jörg designed this assuming that the Mongolians wouldn't have cold springs, um, he uses a wooden arrow shaft to act as a spring. So you slide the bolts beneath the arrow tip uh, and it clicks in and you can load up to uh, four bolts. So I should point out that this does use um, the short crossbow bolts as used with the Cobra crossbow. And yeah, like I said, you can hold up to four. So here the magazine is fully loaded. There are four crossbow bolts inside. Uh, the arrow, which is serving as the spring, is keeping it in. How it works is that once you pull the string past this midpoint here, there's a small recess. The string will go past the bolt. It will then slide along the shaft uh, behind the uh, knock and then it will be cocked and loaded. When the arrow is discharged, the arrow or the spring will push the next bolt down and put that into position. So the string will come down again and then it will discharge and then you will uh, load the next one automatically, slide it down, shoot, and then it presses down for the last bolt and then it shoots. 
So I'll try to show this as best I can from this angle. Um, you can see the slot here is cut to guide the string. So when you pull it back, it follows that line. There is a small recess cut into the guide so the string can make its way around the tip of the bolt. Once it gets past that tip, it slides along the shaft of the bolt until it reaches the back of the magazine. Once it gets there, it slides behind the knock, makes a click sound, and then you are basically cocked. It is possible to use the back of the uh, wood to act as a draw stopper um, so you can hold it there for a bit longer. Once you're ready to discharge, you can let go. The string is behind the knock, so by letting the string go forward, it pushes the bolt forward and it discharges out through the front of the tube over here. See the front of the tube, it has the slots cut out for the fletchers, comes out like that. Now the next arrow, is pushed into position by the arrow here, which acts as the spring. So again, repeat the same process, pull it back, get past the tip of the arrow, pull back all the way until it clicks, then let the string go, and the arrow comes out the other end. Repeat for next shot clicks, release, arrow is discharged, Boop. and once more for your fourth bolt, clicks, discharge, Boop. and then laugh heartily. To reload, you have your bolts, you can slide it beneath the arrow tip, and it clacks in. Very much like loading one of the old fashioned rifles. Satisfying tactile and audible feel. And that's a four shot magazine. Comes in there and comes out like that. Next shot, pull back, click, comes out, pull it back, click, comes out, pull it back, click, comes out. Then reload of course. and repeat. So pull, releases, pull, pull, pull. <laughs> then reload. And shoot. <laughs> now I've been experimenting a bit with this device. Now it may seem like an obvious choice for a rapid fire spray and pray weapon, but there's no risk why you can't use the shoot accurately. The fact that this is a full length arrow guide means the arrow or the bolt will come out exactly where you point it, as long as you point in the right place. Uh, it's real like cheating. It's like a guidance system or a guide rail for the entire bolt. So it will come out fairly straight, fairly accurately. I think the reason why you might shoot inaccurately with this is if you kind of hip fire it, you shoot as fast as possible. But if you actually take aim shots, you can keep this on target and shoot repeated shots on the same spot. What I do is use the front of the device as a sight pin in a certain way. So you can see this in your vision and you use that to judge the gap to the target. Um, and I use the back of the tool as a cheek rest like a modern rifle. And what I find is that once I have a shot on target, I can keep my cheek there, pull it back for the next shot, and then hit the same spot almost exactly straight afterwards. Unfortunately, my club is closed today because of some uh, special event, so uh, I only have my backyard to shoot in, but I really couldn't wait to uh, try this out and demonstrate this. Um, but I'm pretty convinced that once I get my sight picture and get familiar with longer distances, this should be just as consistent if not more than shooting uh, a normal bone manually.
that's absolutely beautiful all shots in the middle there and like I said once you have your range or your sight picture just keep the bow there and shoot the next set of arrows very intuitive easy to use beautiful and can you imagine how tactically viable this could be I mean you have multiple shots on target you can get one shot in and then move forward no reloading move forward like an assault weapon it's amazing now of course if only four shots in the magazine it is kind of limiting so it isn't that overpowered um, four shots go by really quickly and imagine in real life um, someone being able to speed shoot from a quiver would sustain this much much more easily but that sort of thing requires a lot of skill a lot of training a lot of discipline whereas this is extremely new friendly i mean i can use it and if i can use it and if i can use it um, this is something which i'd imagine would not be used for horseback but by use on foot and um, in fact if you think about this i reckon the most useful function for this sort of thing would be foot archers using the same um, tactics as the Koreans or the Turkish using the arrow guides, long range bombardment, since you have the luxury of being able to reload um, without being threatened and you can shoot much faster. And as the enemy closed in, you could switch to more precise point shooting and again discharge several arrows at once, reload and discharge several arrows. Uh, it might be possible to set up rotating lines where you have um, two or three ranks who are shooting, they rotate back and reload or they kneel down like musket volleys. Uh, the possibilities are there. I mean of course we're just really um, conjecturing now because this was not historical at all. But what if that's the exciting part about using tools like this and I'm really amazed that Yerk has brought this to light because this works. Absolutely works. I need to let go. But we're thinking about it. And that is super, super impressive. Also interesting is that Unlike the crossbow, this does force you to use correct form because to reach the draw length, you need to expand and draw to the right point. Now, you do have a reference point and you do have to click here so it is audible, but you can't get there without using the same form as you would with doing normal archery. So, you do have to stretch out, you do have to use your back muscles. Uh, I'm using a light bow. This is the uh, Nika Archery ET4 Mong Yuen. This is the, uh, the 15 pound version, the, the youth one. So they're not going that fast. And they can shoot really rapidly with a light bow, but still, it encourages you to use correct technique. You can see I'm actually stretching out then to get the final um, expansion and click, which is why I said before, it reminds me of using the Olympic style clickers and that can be quite exhausting because you are pushing yourself now of course uh, how far you draw back depends on exactly how long your device is um, Jurg's is I think 32 inches so it draws quite long I'm a much smaller person I draw 27 inch around here so um, he made this much shorter for me very comfortable to use just right it's just on the edge of my max draw length um, and it just feels feels amazing was wonderful. I know many of us are simple people, we just have fun of archery and everything about this is mindless fun. Just the act of feeding arrows into the magazine, the fact that you have a magazine, I just stuck out process that this is a thing. You're gonna wonder, we're thinking about whether we could or couldn't or not whether we should or shouldn't. I mean, how do you go back to doing normal archery after playing with this? That is so satisfying. Just, just doing this, just feeding arrows into the mag, hearing it click. Oh, that, that does it. It's that audible and tactile feedback. 
and actually works really well really well I know when Jörg was testing uh, in his video he uh, sent a few shots high but I've, I've never missed a shot if the correct aim point everything goes well one at two and like I said once you get the first shot in everything goes in the same spot it's all about having the sight picture having the same anchor point and in this case I'm using a cheek rest if you can call it that not dropping my arms still using good technique beautiful beautiful ah oh, I can do this all day uh, and in fact you can probably see by the uh, shadows that I uh, I think I have been doing it all day now when Jörg was testing in his video a few people pointed out disappointingly that he wasn't using a Mongolian bow and that is correct the uh, ET4 uh, sold by Nika Archery or Elong Archery is in fact the Mughal crab bow which is not a Mongol bow uh, it's often sold as one but in itself it's not a Mongol design so to rectify that I've done this <laughs> this is the Ishvan Tath Mongolian bow um, it's the closest thing I have to Mongolian bow so I have mounted the uh, instant Genghis Khan on a slightly more accurate bow unfortunately this uh, bow is a bit too big it doesn't fit um, the gap for the uh, um, the instant Genghis Khan um, it's just hanging in there uh, my arrow pass is about to fly off but uh, I've tried it once, uh, this is a 40 pound bow which is easily much more powerful than what we were using for the ET4 uh, but let's see how it works holy crap that works I mean getting to full draw at this length with 40 plus pounds is a lot more difficult <laughs> oh no control on that shot but that really kicked out ah one more in the magazine oh that was right on the ground well i guess you need to have uh, a slightly lower weight to really enjoy this but uh that definitely works um the uh the forward um momentum has kind of pushed the uh, grip right into the uh, the magazine so um, the arrow pass is about to come flying off uh, but I say it does work uh, it's obviously was designed for that one bow that Yoga and I had but um, if you have a bow which um, fits the grip or you can widen it a bit more then you could use any horse bow I guess so uh, yeah a Mongolian bow with the instant Genghis Khan there it's done Overall thoughts on the instant Genghis Khan <laughs> Jörg is a crazy crazy man This thing is a beast uh, I, I really enjoyed watching his video uh, I didn't think I'd get to use it but now that I've got one It is legit this thing actually works uh, It is a hell of a lot of fun uh, really like I can't take it seriously enough it's just like it's 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 a fun toy but it does send arrows out rapidly it it's just so simple it is masterful design and engineering with the simplest of tools uh, I, I can't, can't believe it actually works so uh, yeah well done Jörg uh, I am extremely happy that you sent this to me uh, it's only the what two in the world I guess so um, thank you all the way from Australia to you in Germany um, if you are lucky enough to uh, get one of these or make one yourself and ask Jörg for that um, that is tremendous fun uh, this is archery redefined and reinvented I can't imagine any practical purpose for it but it's just a fantasy geek out and this actually works um, is there any downside uh, yeah I guess 
this. Uh, I find, honestly, the, um, the ridgy design uh, is a little painful, to be honest. Um, when shooting off the fingers, I found myself um, scraping the bottom of the bumpy ridge most of the time. Um, I know when yoga shooting, you're shooting quite low. Um, I'm anchoring high, so I do scrape that on every shot. So I've got blisters on my fingers. So it was not like to see. Uh, it is a V2 of this version, Jörg. Probably do something about this ridge so that you don't claw it as you uh, draw the string back. But as you can see, uh, if you do anchor and align and shoot correctly, it hits that middle rapidly. Anyway, thanks so much to Jörg for sharing this. If you want to see even crazier stuff, do see his channel if you haven't already. Uh, he's got far more crazy things than this piece, but uh, it's been absolute fun. Uh, he is 100% legit, 100% crazy, and uh, I can never hope to recreate his laugh, but I hope you enjoyed this video. This is Nish Sensei, and I will see you next time.